Welcome to the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions that are happening both tonight and tomorrow, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions too. And lastly, this presentation is being recorded, and that recording will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Pennsylvania. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters, starting with Pace University. Awesome, thank you so much. Hi everybody, my name is Megan Mummy, and I'm the Associate Director of Admissions on Pace's New York City campus, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit more about Pace. So, Pace University, is a New York school with two campuses. Our one campus is in New York City, specifically in downtown Manhattan. And this is the larger of our two campuses. So on our New York City campus, we have about 6,200 undergraduate students. We do have a very vertical campus. So if you're looking for something non-traditional in New York, this would really be a good fit for you. Our entire campus is located within a five block radius from our main building. And we do have guaranteed housing for all four years. So even though we're a city school, everything is close together, vertical, so you can walk between uh, from your classes to your residence hall and back and still be able to um, have you know, that walking distance for campus. We have another campus in Westchester, New York, specifically in the town of Pleasantville. So if you're looking for a campus that's very traditional, then Pleasantville could be a good place for you. It's in Westchester County. This campus is 200 acres, and we have five different residence halls on our Westchester campus. Housing is also guaranteed for all four years on this campus, so you won't have to worry about having your main campus uh, separate from your campus with your housing. Something that is unique to PACE for both of our campuses is the PACE path. So the PACE path is a customized four-year plan that will start your first official day on campus, which will be your summer orientation. We will pair you with your academic advisor who will be in your program to make sure that everything that you're doing at PACE makes sense for your end goal and that you know of all of the opportunities available to you. We work with your advisor to make sure your academics, um, you know, you have the major, you have the minor that you want, maybe you're doing a double major, you have your internship, and you have your dedicated mentors and advisors to work, work with you through the entire process. Moving on to the academic side. So at Pace University, we have over 150 different majors and programs, um, also including accelerated and graduate degrees. We have six different sub-schools listed on the screen. So we have everything from health science to performing arts to psychology. We have a law school at the graduate level. We have accounting, management, marketing. Uh, we have education, both early childhood, childhood and, and adolescence. And then we do also have computer science. At PACE, our average class size is about 20 students, and our student to faculty ratio is 16 to 1. So even though we have about 9,000 students between our two campuses, you're not going to be in these huge stadium style classes. Everything will be small, and that will just be another part of your PACE path is those small classes. Internships are very important to us. So we really, really use our position as a New York institution to our advantage. So you're able to start and um, work with uh, career services really your first semester on campus, and you can start interning as early as your second semester on campus. We do a career fair per campus per semester. So it's a total of four big career fairs per year. And then we do also uh, do smaller employee visits or we'll do specific major internship fairs as well. We do also have an online database called Handshake where students are able to apply for internships um, on their own time. And employers can also look at you based on your resume and reach out to you for an interview for an internship. Last year, we had over 19,000 internships posted on this website called Handshake. So definitely take advantage of career services. We have students who intern with the FBI, looking at these pictures here. They interned with the Late Show with Stephen Colbert on SNL with the big four accounting firms, really all over. On the, uh, the financing side, so at Pace University, we are private. So even though you're an out-of-state student, the education will not cost you any more since you're out of state. When you apply to the university, you will be automatically considered for a merit scholarship based on your performance in high school. So 
about the overall application, your GPA, and SATs or ACTs if you submit those. Separate from merit scholarship, there is need-based aid. So if you are looking for additional aid, you're able to submit the FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid. And as you can see on the screen, about 95% of our students receive some type of financial aid. On our website, we have a merit scholarship estimator, as well as a net price calculator, where you're able to go online, plug in your information, preview your scholarship, and preview your overall expected cost before you even apply to the In regards to the application, the application itself is pretty simple. So we are on the common application. We also have a base application. You can submit either or. We'll need two letters of recommendation, your essay, your high school transcript, and then if you would like to submit SATs or ACTs, you can, but Pace University was test optional before the pandemic, and we will remain test optional in the future as well. We do have a few different deadlines. These were our deadlines from this past year, but we expect that they'll stay pretty much the same. We have an early decision deadline, two early action deadlines, and then we have a regular decision preferred deadline. If you're interested in our School of Performing Arts, we have an application deadline of December 15th. That is a hard deadline. If you submit your academic application after December 15th, you cannot be considered for the program. And then nursing deadline is February 15th. That is all for me. So here's my contact information. I am the counselor for the entire state. So please feel free to connect with me if you have any other questions. Thank you. All right, thank you, Pace University. And next up, we have Bennington College. All right, thank you everyone so much for being here with us tonight. I'm so excited to share more about Bennington College with you all. Um, so let's get started uh, where we're located. We are in the southwest corner of Vermont, nestled right in the Green Hills, as you can see in the photograph there. Um, moving on, um, Bennington's uh, <clears throat> a little bit different than some of the schools that you might be looking at. Um, we are, are under the belief that the most valuable education a student can have is one that is student driven and that they're actively engaged in shaping themselves. Um, we also believe in the power of innovation and you'll hear that time and time again as we as we talk about Bennington. Um, that means that we have very few restrictions about what and how you can study at Bennington. Um, we only have one required course. It's a first year experience course and really just helps you get the lay of the land and helps you understand how to be the most successful student you can be at Bennington. We are different from a lot of other small liberal arts schools in two major ways. The first is the plan, which is our approach to education. And the second is through field work term, which is our opportunity for career exploration that happens every year. So the plan is an opportunity for you to get creative and take charge of your education. There's that student driven part I was talking about. Um, you don't have to choose between your interests. So if you're someone that's interested in theater and English and maybe biology, you can do it all. Um, and you'll find some really creative way to, to make it work uh, for yourself and that engages you in your interests. Um, we want you to create a plan that really caters to your individuality and to your own goals and interests. So we ask you to create your own major, essentially, uh, using 45 different areas of study. So currently we have um, a student, for example, studying math separately and then combining theater and psychology. And he's really interested in why audiences love morally ambiguous characters. Um, we have another student that studies food studies and dance and kind of studies them separately, but did a really cool creative um, uh, dance last year uh, representing food insecurity um, in one of her classes that she was taking. Here's a year by year example of what the plan would look like. Basically, we want you to just explore during your first year. Uh, remember, you're in charge. You get to decide how you want to study and what you want to study. Um, and you're always supported by others in the process. So in that year or two, you can see that you write something called your plan proposal, which is just essentially saying, here's what I'd like to study and here's my support for why. Um, and then the Dean's office will give you a plan committee, which is a faculty committee comprised of three to four members that represent all the areas of study you've included in your plan. Um, so the takeaway here is that yes, you are in the driver's seat, but you always have support behind you um, at any step of the way at Bennington. 
The plan is also uh, meant to be flexible and to change with you. So you'll see in your third year, you can rewrite and reorient your plan if needed. Fieldwork term is the second way that we really stand out from all of those colleges out there that you might be learning about. Um, we, uh, every year, it, it's, it's a requirement of our students. Uh, they can go anywhere in the world and try out a career. It's about a six to seven week uh, time frame every January and February when there are no classes on campus. Um, so a lot of times our students will take on internships or start their own businesses. We've had students travel the world and shoot documentaries. Uh, we've had students start nonprofits. Um, some students go on to do performance um, or they'll learn a trade. Um, so really the, the benefit there is that you get the career exploration and the resume building before you even graduate. And it helps students really find those great connections for future employers. I think about 90% of our uh, fieldwork term employers say that they would hire their, uh, their fieldwork term student. So briefly, we'll discuss home at Bennington. Um, again, we're a little different here too. We don't have your traditional dorm style. Instead, we have real, real houses, as you can see here. Um, there's about 30 students per house. They're all co-ed, all grades, all genders are represented in every house. Um, and every house kind of has their own personality that gets decided at the beginning of the year, which is really fun. Um, so here you can see some examples of a real living room that we have with a real working fireplace that the students love every Every winter. Um, there are kitchens in every house um, and every house has something uh, every week called coffee hour where it's just a time for you to get together with everyone in your house, all your housemates, and you can share about the week ahead, um, ask for support for some upcoming events, whatever it may be. Um, and yes, we allow students to have cars on campus. That's always a big question. Um, our students really like to get out um, outside of campus occasionally and uh, check out the local area for hiking or for other outdoors, uh, kind of fun stuff that you can do. We're also very close to um, the Berkshires, which has a ton of cultural different activities that you can take part in uh, with museums or other parts of um, uh, visual arts and performing arts. Um, and then we're also about an hour away from Albany. So it takes about an hour to, to get on the train and hop down to New York City if you'd like to spend the weekend there. Um, and briefly, I'll mention uh, how to apply. Um, so we have the, we're on the common application and we also have our own way to apply through the dimensional application. Either or, we see both as, as equal. Um, we require all the normal parts of the common application. We are test optional and have been for a super long time. We're gonna continue that. Um, we also recommend an, a, an interview and we recommend a portfolio, although that is totally optional to you. Um, we have merit-based aid and need-based aid. Need-based is through the FAFSA and CSS profile and um, our merit aid is based on your transcript. So if you have any questions, I'll pop my, uh, my contact information into the chat. Thank you all. All right, thank you, Bennington College. Next up, we have the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Welcome. Hello, everyone. My name is Alex Seymour. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at UMass Amherst. And thank you for having me speak with you today. Although we are incredibly disappointed, we cannot welcome you to our campus and meet you in person. We're thankful to have the opportunity to connect with you through Zoom. Yes, Zoom, the gift that keeps on giving. Now let's talk a little bit about UMass and what makes it special. We are located in Amherst, Massachusetts, the Pioneer Valley. We are three hours from New York, two hours from Boston, and one hour from Vermont and New Hampshire. Amherst is rated one of the top college towns in the country. Amherst and Northampton have over 50 restaurants and shops. There's a free bus system that takes you all over the valley and to the other schools and the five other colleges, which makes up the five college consortium. UMass has over 24,000 undergrads, and 6,000 grad students. In a 15 mile radius, you have over 40,000 students within the five colleges. So you have 40,000 students between the ages of 18 and 27. So there's a ton of things to do. Not only are we a top public university, ranked in the top 30 in the country, 
We are a Carnegie One research institution. Only 7% of colleges and universities in the country have Carnegie One status. We also have the number one dining commons in the country for the past five years. It's not number one because of the great food, because of the options and the awareness of food allergies and dietary restrictions. And finally, what makes UMass really special is the options we provide for our students. We have over 100 degree programs in 10 schools and colleges. We also have over 300 student run organizations you can choose from. And if you don't like any of those, you can create your own club. As I said earlier, UMass Amherst has over 100 majors in 10 schools and colleges. Let me highlight a few. Our engineering program is ranked the best public engineering school in New England. HFA, Humanities and Fine Arts, is world renowned and the Department of Linguistics is ranked third worldwide. CISC, our College of Information and Computer Science, is ranked among the top 25 programs nationally. And ISOM, our Eisenberg School of Management, is ranked number one best public business program in the Northeast. And our Stockbridge School of Agriculture is ranked eighth in the world for top agricultural universities and third in the US. Let's talk a little bit about the application timeline. There are two timelines when you can apply. Early action, November 5th, and regular decision, January 15th. But the process should start now by one, working on your essay, and two, finding out who you want to write your recommendations, and three, making a list of all your extracurricular activities. We are keeping the same deadlines, but we also understand a lot could happen between now, November, and January. With that in mind, we'll be flexible on an individual case-by-case -case basis. You can submit your FAFSA by October 1st, and March 1st is a priority deadline. This is very important. Be prepared and make sure you give yourself plenty of time to meet these deadlines. UMass will also be going test optional for the next two years. Other online events. Besides this info session, there are other events that you can be a part of. I recommend the virtual tours with our tour guides, which will give you more of a student perspective. Also, other ways to keep in contact with us, you can go on our Facebook page, um, Twitter, Instagram, and if you need to connect with a counselor, you can connect with a counselor at mail at admissions.umass.edu. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, University of Massachusetts Amherst. Next up, we have Coastal Carolina University. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. All right, perfect, thank you. What's going on, everybody? My name is William Clark. I am an admissions counselor here at CCU. It's gonna give you a little rundown about Coastal Carolina and what we have to offer. We are hashtag Teal Nation. We are actually relatively a relatively young institution. We've been around since 1954, and our campus continues to grow. If you actually take a look right here, we are a happy medium-sized school. We have over 10,000 students. I'd say it's not too uh, not too big, not too small. We have five academic colleges, and we have over 90 programs of study. There's a lot of majors here on campus, and of course, one of those main majors we have, other than our college, our uh, College of Business. We have marine science because we're nine miles west of Myrtle Beach. Our student faculty ratio is about 16 to one. So class sizes are about 20 to 35 students. So I think that's really, really neat depending on you know, how big your high school classes are right now. So when you come to school year, you are not only known as a person or a name, you won't be known as a number and you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with professors. And also almost 80% of our, of our professors have a doctoral or terminal degree. When it comes to student involvement, we have over 120 organizations, whether it's SGA, Greek Life, Club Sports. We even have a Quidditch team here on Coastal's campus. And I was also a part of that WCC radio that you see right there. I had a great time with it. I had my own radio show, my own time slot. I actually had to have my own special guest. And that also landed me an internship here in Myrtle Beach. I actually worked for iHeartRadio for about five years and um, up until last year. So opportunities are definitely there. 
take advantage, get it, uh, get involved, and actually, and it also makes you he healthier, not only happier. We are a Division One team. Of course, if you don't know, we do have a surf turf or a color turf here on Coastal's campus. Our baseball team won the College World Series back in 2016. Our football team did tremendous this past year, which was one of the greatest runs in Sunbelt history. All students are able to go to these events for free. So thank mom and, that, mom and dad for that because it's all tied into your tuition. But it's one of those good events to go to any sporting event because you get to meet new students, you get to have a great time. And when the weather's perfect, it makes up for a really, really good day. Hashtag Teal Nation, if you see right here, we get over 15,000 applications a year. But if you look up and down the I-95 corridor, you see we get a lot of students from that mid-Atlantic area, Pennsylvania being one of them. And I think it's actually pretty neat uh, when it comes to the state of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania is about three or four as far as enrollment for students here at Coastal Carolina. We're 51% in-state, 47% out-of-state, and 2% international. So when you're inside of a classroom, you may be sitting beside a student who's from South Carolina, like myself, or you may be sitting beside a student who's from Pennsylvania or New York or New Jersey. Here are some of those requirements. We look for a good 50% range to aim for, 3.2 to a 4.0. A 19 to a 24 for the ACT and a 1020 to 1150 for the uh, for the SAT. And like I said, it's 50 percent. So 25 percent of students have lower than that, and 25 percent 25 percent of students have higher than that. So kind of keep that in mind. Don't get uh, don't get discouraged if you don't see your range on here. So these are just numbers we um, we encourage students to aim for. We are test optional going forward. I'm hoping at least at least for next fall. I know for fall 2021 we are. We look for a 3.5 GPA along with your rigorous program. That's the AP courses, dual enrollment courses, things like that. And we encourage you to apply test optional. And when you do that, send us letters of recommendation, um, essays, statements, anything like that. And there's a link right there at the bottom. So I can go into a, hot, a lot more detail, but I don't have a lot of time. So follow that link right there. And those questions can definitely get answered for you. This is basically the standard core, especially for the South Carolina students, but I know the state of Pennsylvania varies. I know I've learned that over the past year or so. So basically, if you don't, if your school doesn't necessarily follow these requirements, it's okay. Just send me a transcript. I can take a look at that for you, and hopefully we can uh, get everything situated for you. We are rolling admissions, so we don't actually have a, a actual deadline. At December 1 is for freshman-based scholarships, i.e. merit awards. So that's when we encourage students to apply and get enrolled by that time so you can get tied in with some scholarships. We have two ways to apply. If you look right here, we have the CCU application and we just started using the Common App this year. I actually like it a lot. It's, you actually can kill two birds with one stone with filling out the application and you also can do an essay. Three weeks until you actually get your decision when we actually receive absolutely everything, whether it's scores, um, letters of recommendation, things like that. This is the tuition I was talking about. This is the highest you would pay right now. We froze the prices for fall 2021. That of course may go up actually the following year. So the most you would pay right now is that's with the highest meal plan and the highest housing plan. Now, this does not include books and miscellaneous fees, things like that. So definitely keep that in mind going forward. But yeah, this is just, just some of the numbers that we wanna offer for you. And I was talking about those freshman-based scholarships, merit awards. There's a lot that goes into the pot when it comes to us deciding what you qualify for. So if you don't you know, necessarily have a really good GPA, but you're very involved, there's a lot that goes into that. So if you look right here on the right-hand side, those are some of the things that we, uh, that we look for when it comes to students. And those freshman-based scholarships can range from 15% up to 60% off tuition. So definitely take advantage of that. That's all I have for you. So here's my information right here. My name is Will Clark, William Clark, whichever you'd like to prefer. You can uh, you know, send me an email. I can set up a Zoom meeting and also you know, give me a phone call. I'd be glad to help anyone out. Thank you all. All right. Thanks, Coastal Carolina University. And next up, we have Milliken University. Thank you. Give me just a second here. All right, so just to begin, my name is Gavin Halpin and I am a St. Louis regional recruiter for Milliken University, but I also work with students from about a dozen other states in the South and in the East. So for those of you who are curious where Milliken is located, if you look at the state of Illinois map there at the bottom of your screen and see the blue icon, we're about as central Illinois as you can get um, with still about two hours away from St. Louis and then three hours from Chicago, just to give you some 
uh, landmark perspective there of what we're close to within the Midwest. Um, the city of Decatur is about 70,000 individuals. Uh, the student population at our university, we are a smaller private school with 2,000 total students. So we have a good uh, a smaller campus feel and community feel to us. If you look in the top right corner, you'll see our downtown Decatur area. That's key to our students in the form that we have several student run ventures in the form of student run businesses, uh, in the form of a copy shop that our students run as well as student art galleries that uh, are only showing our students work as well as a uh, downtown theater space that is uh, a black box theater that our students fully manage every aspect of. So our community gets to interact with our students and vice versa, but also it's not uncommon to see members of our community come to campus frequently for athletic events or to watch a musical or to see a different lecture taking place. So we have a great working relationship in that capacity. I know rankings aren't everything when it comes to the college search side of things, but here are a couple that we're really proud of, specific, specifically that third one. Uh, there are hundreds of schools within the Midwest and in Illinois, and for us to be uh, receiving recognition as a number three best college in Illinois to land you a job is something that we're really proud of. Um, we are a career focused institution. We want our students, uh, when they walk across the stage to get their diploma, to have that plan in place already. Uh, so we take great pride in helping our students uh, succeed in that path. Here's a good snapshot of uh, all statistics uh, when it comes to Millican. I mentioned that 2000 total student population, a little bit further on that, uh, our average class size is 15 and our student to faculty ratio is 10 to one. So similar to some other smaller schools you hear, uh, one of the big distinctions with us is that your only going to be taught by faculty. We don't have TAs teaching you. You're not gonna be uh, having to fight with a grad student to get time with a professor. It's truly something that you're taught by uh, in most situations, the, the most advanced individuals within their field as far as degrees and licensures. So that's something that is uh, peace of mind to know that our faculty members are going to know everything for better or worse about yourself in your time with us. If you go over to the top right, you'll see that we have 50 plus academic programs. I'll break down the individual colleges and schools within the university in just a second. Um, and then just at the bottom right, you'll see that we have 23 men's and women's division three sports. And those are at the varsity level. Um, our conference is the listed there is the Collegiate Conference of Illinois and Wisconsin. It's one of the most competitive division three programs. So if you're interested in uh, continuing to take on something that you've dedicated a great amount of time to, uh, and be at a high competitive level, but still focus really on being a student athlete. That's the, the great fortune of the division three level. Here are four individual colleges and schools at Millican. Uh, I'll just kind of briefly go over them. Obviously won't list every major within it, but on the College of Arts and Sciences, that's gonna include some of your humanities. So the political science, the history, the communication, but as well as include the, the true sciences of wanting to major in biology or chemistry. I always wanna make the distinction for students with us that a student you hear a lot of the times might say, I'm gonna major in pre-med. Well, you're gonna be advised in a pre-med track with us, but your major is going to be on the science side in biology or in chemistry. So I always like to make that distinction for students. Next, you see the College of Fine Arts. So that makes up the individual programs of our School of Theater and Dance, our School of Music, our School of Art and our School of Arts Technology. Uh, specifically, one that we see applications from almost 50 states is our musical theater program. We offer a Bachelor of Fine Arts or BFA in uh, our School of Theater and Dance and see a great recognition as a, a top 10 program for that. Next, you see our College of Professional Studies, housing the nursing side of things, education, exercise science and sport. And then our Tabor School of Business where you have a variety of business administration, but on down uh, accounting, finance, international business, we see a lot of students seek to uh, combine a minor or a double major within that uh, individual school. When it comes to opportunities for involvement, we do have 90 plus organizations. I always think it's helpful for students to think of involvement on our campus as individual bubbles. So the bubble of the athletic and wellness, the bubble of the fine arts and performance piece, Greek life, so on and so forth. So on average, we see students by the time they graduate from Millican having uh, taken part in three opportunities uh, on campus. So even the student that comes in and says, I'm just gonna run track or I'm gonna be involved in student government. They end up joining at least two other things in their time with us. Another opportunity to 
uh, explore on our campus would be the study abroad piece. We do see a large amount of students take on either going for a full semester or maybe going into one of the immersion trips we offer that are 10 day up to a month long excursions, sometimes with a faculty led excursion or on the student's own. And finally, how could you end up applying uh, for the students who are in the junior range right now? We are test optional for this year and next. All we would need to see would be high school transcripts. You could apply on our regular app or a part of the common app. What's ever gonna be easiest for you? Thank you for attending and I will turn it over. All right, thank you so much Milliken University. And next up we have Shippensburg University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jeremy Miller. I'm um, coming to you from, from Pennsylvania, from the, the great state of Commonwealth. Sorry, great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Um, so hopefully you can see my screen here. We're just going to go through a quick slideshow, just like others have been as well. Um, this wonderful photos of Old Main. This was it back in 1871. Could you imagine going to school all in one building? Eat, sleep, go to class all in one building. That's not true today. Um, we are 200 plus acres. We have about 6,000 undergraduate students, uh, about another 1,400 graduate students uh, pursuing their master's or doctoral programs. Average class size here at Shippensburg is about 23 students. Uh, we have over 100 areas of study across the campus. Uh, many of our programs have been nationally recognized. Uh, for instance, our criminal justice program is one of eight in the nation being nationally accredited and certified. And that's just one of many programs again there. Um, typically, we have students traveling all around the world. Um, and it's not just through Shippensburg's partnerships, being that we are a Pennsylvania state school, there's 14 other state schools in the state of Pennsylvania. So we partner all of our um, study abroad options together. So our campus, our state, our students that attend the universities have a lot of opportunities at their fingertips. Another piece here is academic support. Because you're a student, we want you to succeed on our campus. We don't want students to come in and just struggle or fail. Um, so we have an entire facility on our campus called our Student Success Center. There's the Learning Center, the Writing Center, tutoring, um, academic support, Office of Accessibility Resources, uh, academic advisors, our career centers there, career coaches. I mean, the list continues to go on. I mean, there's so many different groups and offices um, that can provide support in our student success center. So the biggest thing we really always say on campus is stop and ask for help and, and somebody's gonna get you to that right person. Um, academics, as I mentioned, over hundred areas to study. These are just some highlight programs. Um, we do have our College of Arts and Sciences, obviously a lot of STEM programs, and then also some humanities-based programming, um, English and literature, communications and journalism is a very large program, TV studio, um, radio station, campus newspaper, I mean, you name it, they're, they're involved in those areas. Um, we do have a school of engineering sciences at this time. They're all ABET accredited programs. So currently we have five engineering programs on our campus. Um, and again, we move into the Col College of Business. Uh, this is probably our most popular area at this time. Uh, the big four, accounting, finance, marketing, management, but entrepreneurship. Uh, management information systems, logistics, supply chain management, human resources, personal financial planning, the list continues to grow. This is really where our website obviously comes into play as well as any college's website. Um, and lastly here, the College of Education and Human Services. Uh, we started as a teacher's college way back in 1871. We are still heavily involved in uh, education. We actually have a public elementary school on our campus. Uh, that we call our lab school so our students are able to get first-hand experience in that facility their freshman and sophomore years um, and then just social work criminal justice some really strong programs for us on our campus obviously we, we don't need to jump into exploratory in depth but if you're undecided you're not alone i mean it's, it's the number one major across the the nation for incoming freshman students in most cases um, at that point and we do offer an honors college on our campus as well so just jumping into kind of some campus life items I'm going to talk about housing on the next slide, but dining, we do offer two dining halls, 10 restaurant eateries, two star, uh, two coffee locations, Starbucks, Dunkin. Um, in the restaurant eateries, we have a Chick-fil-A. Well, sorry, we have a Chick-fil-A starting in the fall. Um, we have a Pizza Hut. We have a deli. We have um, a sushi place, uh, a grill nation, kind of like a miniature Red Robin style location and many other options there. But we will have Chick-fil-A in the fall and then the two dining hall options there. All, everything is on your meal card. So it's all a meal swipe system on our campus. Talking about housing. So I'm just gonna show you here real quick some room layouts. We offer six suite style residence halls. 
and five different styles of suites in those residence halls. Um, every building, no matter if it's a traditional or a suite style facility, does have free laundry, study lounges on every floor, community kitchens, recycling all of your trashes on every floor. Um, there are storage closets full of rec, rec equipment and hammocks and all kinds of different stuff there. Biggest things at Shippensburg, we allow you to select your room and who your roommate would be. So we really put it all in your hands. Room, and you see up here, there's some numbers. Room one is a two person suite. Uh, you're able to choose those. You're able to choose your roommate. These are individual bedrooms. You have a small living room space. Room two would be more of your kind of traditional, but still a suite. You have a bathroom and shower in there. All of our suites come with bathrooms and showers. You only have to share your bathroom with one other person. Um, so again, there's five different styles to the suites. And number three is our traditional style room uh, where you'd still be sharing the bathroom and shower with the other individuals on that floor. So one thing I always say about this, you're choosing all this. It's not like the university's housing all the freshmen in traditional building. You would choose the traditional if you wanted that at that point. So some sports and, and campus life pieces. We have 20 division two sports teams, um, pretty popular in the field hockey area. We're actually four, four time national division two champions for women's field hockey. Um, and then also both men's and women's very competitive in those areas. 150 clubs and organizations on our campus. Uh, as, as many other colleagues here have said, I mean, there's ways to get involved on college campuses. Just go out and be a part of something. You never know what can come from that. If it can become a job, it can become um, a new passion, new friends um, that become lifelong individuals in your, in your lives. Um, so a lot of great pieces there. We do have a pride center on campus, multicultural student affairs, veterans offices, Office of Accessibility Resources, um, Women's Center, Health Center. I mean, there's so much stuff. So the, ap the application for us is online. Um, if you're still a senior looking to apply, you can do that. We are rolling admissions, but this is all of my contact information. Take a, take a photo of it, screenshot your, your page here. Um, most likely I would be your counselor, depending if where you live in Pennsylvania, we do have specific counselors for, the other, for each kind of territory, a couple counties. Um, but if you're outside the state, I am your, your individual as well. So um, anybody is available to talk to you in our offices, but you know, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you guys very much for joining us. Um, and I will give it back to our facilitator. All right. Thank you, Shippensburg University. Uh, we have a little bit of time left. I'd by my count about eight minutes. So I'd like to ask all of our presenters to go ahead and turn their cameras back on so we can do a little round robin. I got a couple questions uh, that I'd like them to, to kind of share their, their thoughts on. So the first question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And why don't we go ahead and start with Pace University and go down the line. So the biggest piece of advice that I would say is just always feel free to ask questions. We are all in this field and we say terms like early action and FAFSA and Common App and you might not know what that means and that's okay. So let us know and we will explain that to you. Better to tell you now or tell you in October than to try to tell you after May 1. I so agree with that advice. That's awesome advice. Um, I think the next thing that I would recommend is to not self-select based on the, the tuition and the costs of the college. Um, you'd be really surprised um, in the spring when you receive your financial aid awards, you might find that the school that you assumed would be the most affordable um, might be edged out by another school that had a really high um, uh, sticker price. So Sticker shock is real. We see that, we hear that. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, try to um, give yourself the opportunity to at least entertain that thought in the spring. Yeah, um, I would say do your research. Take your time. Ask, ask questions. You're the one that's going to go to that institution for the next four years. I'm already there. But you need to find out from the people that are there, what do they like about the school? What don't they like about the school? What will you change about the school? Why did you choose this school? It's very important because you need to get that student experience that you know, you're gonna get the information from me, but it's the students that, that, that sell the school. I can agree with that too. Uh, then we've all had our own paths to get from point A to point B. And I think it's always like when you learn to speak to someone and find one person who can, you can attach to in a school and higher education that you can say, hey, 
can you get help, can you help me get here because I was a transfer student so I needed that guiding path and one person got me here asking questions learning about campus life you know don't just go there because your friends are going there that that's basically what I've learned tremendously do be smart about your decision like Mr. Alex uh, Seymour just said you know it's your decision you're going to be making for the next four years and not further than that so be very smart and ask a lot of questions and take your time for sure I'm going to do kind of a selfish uh, for our field uh, plug here and just say my advice is to utilize us, utilize the admission context. There are truly hundreds and thousands of us ready to help you and not not bombard you if you don't want to be bombarded, but help you and give you guidance um, and, and let you breathe and make your search your search. So utilize us for any and all concerns. Lastly, I'll say visit, 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 visit visit virtually, visit in person, visit again, you know, depending where you are, depending on how far you're traveling, call the admissions offices, make sure you have stuff set up. If you, it's a school that, you know, you can get to in an hour and you just want to drive by on a Saturday, visit. That's, you have to see a college campus. You have to know if I'm going to be, do I feel comfortable? Do I look, does this look like a place I want to be for the next couple of years? Um, Outside of that, just use us. We are admissions officers. We're not rejection officers. Call us, email us. Our offices are here for you. This is what we do day in and day out. We're here. Great. Lots of great advice there. Uh, I think we might have just a little bit of time to squeeze one last question in. So let's go ahead and talk about what is your favorite event or tradition on your campus? Okay, so at PACE, we do this thing called Weeks of Welcome, where every year during the beginning weeks, uh, we have so many events and there's always events, but it's like jam packed with three times the amount of events. And with our position in New York, obviously more during a normal time, uh, we are constantly going and seeing Broadway shows or going to see the Yankees or bringing in some Broadway choreographer to come to campus and teach you steps to a dance that you've seen somewhere. So. Weeks of Welcome is my favorite tradition. And there's food, okay, sorry. Um, at Bennington, we have so many, so many traditions, but one of my favorites is Midnight Breakfast. Um, so that happens every term, right around the time of, um, of finals. Um, usually it'll happen when students are right in the middle of studying for their finals at around 11 o'clock or midnight, hence the name. Uh, the the bell will toll in the center of campus and then everyone knows to rush to the dining hall and faculty and staff are serving up a pancake breakfast and then there's um, musicians that will play for a few hours. Um, it's a really, really fun time and a really great break. That's great. This is an easy one for me. At UMass Amherst on Halloween, we've got lobster and filet mignons for 12 hours straight. It's, it's on. So I'm done with that one. I can't top that. But basically, uh, one of our ones out here is every Tuesday we wear teal, hashtag teal Tuesday. And it, it, just, it just ties in with the tradition of our Chanticleer and the bird. Everyone asks what that is. It's a crafty rooster. So it, don't, don't, don't get it twisted. <laughs> but yeah, that's our big tradition down here on Tuesday. Students wear teal. Millican has another run on food. You'll find that most colleges and universities have some type of tradition involving food. Ours is right before, uh, as the fall semester is wrapping up, we have a cookie party that truly the faculty and staff and administrators are serving. It's, you've never seen so many cookies in one large ballroom that the students come. Students come with Tupperware containers and are eating cookies throughout finals. So the cookie part is it. All right, um, I'll say tradition wise for us, it is um, our fountains in front of Old Main. A lot of our students start their, their college career around the fountain at student convocation and will end their college career taking photos in the fountain in their, in their cap and gown. Um, the other thing is ship happens, that's, that's us. Uh, so um, we got t-shirts, we got bumper stickers, it's, it's ship happens. So, um, but thank you guys for joining us. Again, reach out to us for questions. All right, thank you. I like hearing that part. Uh, makes me want to go back to school. And uh, that's definitely one of the things that you remember the most are those traditions. But we are just out of time now. So I want to say thank you so much for everyone for joining us. Thank you to all of our presenters today. 
When you close this window, there's gonna be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide us. Also, this is just one of many different sessions being hosted both today and tomorrow. So be sure for, to sign up for additional sessions if you'd like. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Pennsylvania. Thanks again.